Okay, so we're in the Photoshop Three Notes, part two of me having to restart it. We're talking about masks today. Masks, a way, a layer effect that allows you to selectively make areas of a layer visible or invisible. Very simple. So we look into Photoshop right now, have this mask on SpongeBob, and if I disable it, you'll see right underneath is all the image information as before. Cool. So how do we make a layer mask? A layer mask is this button in your layers panel. And that will create, if you have no selection made, that will make an empty layer mask. We'll talk about selections and masks in a second. Select the chosen layer in the layer panel. Click the icon. Make sure you select the layer mask and then fill in using the brush tool. So what that would look like, let me go ahead and go over to, oh, that's not the right one. All right, I'll just delete this mask. Okay, anyway, so now I got my Dirty Dan. If I press this, you'll see that there's just this little white thumbnail that comes up. This is my layer mask. If I go paint black on my mask, it's going to make things invisible. And since there's no other layer in here, there's nothing to see behind it. Here, I'm gonna put a layer filled with red in here so that we can see. Now you can see there's a mask, there's a line on my mask that's in black. So now I can see through to the red layer underneath. So if I keep painting black on my mask, what I'm doing is I'm hiding the Dirty Dan picture and it's showing through to the red underneath. If I were to paint white instead of black, black basically meaning 0% visibility and white meaning 100% visibility. So you can also use shades of gray. So if I were to change this to this, you'll see it'll be gray. And if I paint on this, you'll see how it changes the visibility of certain things. So it's kind of see-through to the red, right? So none of that is really useful though. So let's delete that. So <clears throat> that brings us to, so that's how you manually edit masks. That's all well and good. And the other thing I want to point out, well, we'll get to that in a second. We'll get to it when I cover selections. So now let's talk about selections and how we can use those to help us mask also. So selections are in and of themselves important, but mostly use them as a means to an end, so to speak. So looking at our selection tools, so this is our move tool. Let's start with the basic selection tool, the rectangular marquee tool. The rectangular marquee tool drags a box. Pretty straightforward. Okay, if I want to deselect or get rid of my selection, it's command or control if you're on Windows D. So that gets rid of your selection. If you mess up your selection or you don't need it anymore, so I get rid of it. So that brings us to um, the other thing that's on the notes here is about the elliptical marquee tool. And it says the keyboard shortcut is shift and M. So Shift M allows you to cycle through your marquee tools, which are under the keyboard shortcut M. Uh, hold on, sorry video, I'm not gonna restart. Yeah? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Video and sorry to my class that I've been getting up. I'm like, I'm like legitimately sorry. Okay. Um, that was on me. I locked my roommate out. Um, so shift M. So that just allows you to cycle through your marquee tools. No, not Maya. So if I do shift M in here, you'll see it brings me into my elliptical marquee, which is just a circle shape an oval, so to speak. Um, 
And then if you're using the shift key while you drag the box or the selection, for your elliptical, it'll be a perfect circle. For your rectangular marquee, it will be a perfect square. Straightforward. So those are your basic selection tools. Make a square, make a circle. So if I made a box like this and I click my mask button, so now you can see that what it did <clears throat> when I clicked the mask button was it used my existing selection. Whatever is in the selection, we get to keep. Everything that's on the outside of the selection, we make hidden. So that is what the effect of the mask button is when you have a selection already made. So again, going back to the basics, if you have no selection made and you click this, it's gonna be empty. If you have a selection made and you click the mask button, it will mask to only show the things inside of your selection. All right, now, <clears throat> Let me go back to the notes here. Okay, so the next set of selection tools. So those are the very, very basic selection tools. Let's talk about the more advanced ones. The lasso tool is kind of free form, or it is free form. Then there's some more advanced lasso tools also. So with the lasso tool, I'm gonna just click on it. It's the next selection tool down. And I'm gonna take this lasso and I'm gonna click and drag a little path loosely around Dirty Dan here. Okay, and boom. So there's my selection, and then if I mask it, you'll see that's what it leaves me with. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the basic lasso tool. Not super useful, it has its moments. So let's talk about the more advanced selection tools, or lasso tools rather. Polygonal lasso. Clicking places a point and connects it to the next point in order until you connect back to the start. So let's take a look at how that works. Click and hold this, polygonal lasso tool, or you can use shift L to cycle through them, it's up to you. But this one is it's more like the tool that we'll be learning about on Tuesday. I said Monday um, earlier, but we have Monday off, folks. So, shouts out to the great MLK. So, you can see here I'm clicking to place these points, and that's what's making my selection. I'm clicking and placing a point, and then it's drawing a straight line to the next point that I place. And then I'll come across here, boom. I have this big selection, mask, boom. All right, so that's that one. And then finally, we have the big boy, which is the magnetic lasso tool. So let me zoom in here, make it a little bit easier to see. Not that, God, stop. Why? I can't do it. I can't do any scroll drag gestures while I'm doing teacher things because my computer lags too much for it to have fine control. Okay. Whatever, dude. There we go. Okay. I need to just be an intelligent person and just use the buttons instead of doing it with my hand. Okay, so magnetic lasso. So basically I'm gonna click down here and you'll, I'm just gonna follow the outline, okay? And you'll see that Photoshop is figuring out for me what I'm trying to select based on where I'm dragging and the contrast of the colors around which I am dragging. So Photoshop is doing its best guess to figure out where I want to select. Now it is not intelligent enough to realize that I want the outside of the outline, and so it is sticking to the inside of the outline, which sucks, but that's okay. It's getting me most of my selection done, so now I'll just at the end have to go back and clean it up a little bit. And 
And then I'll, you can also click to lay down points if it's not figuring it out. And I'll click back to the start and you'll see once you click back to where you started on this, it will complete your selection. And so now if I mask this, you'll see I'm left with Dirty Dan, except I need to go back and, and fix this so that his outer outline shows up. So that part went away. And also down here, a little bit of him got cut off from the bottom. So that's the magnetic lasso tool. That allowed, and Photoshop does the, the thinking for you on that tool. Okay, and finally, quick select tool and then the racist uncle wand. You'll see why I call it that in a second. So quick select wand, this is a very good tool. I like this one. So the quick select tool is the next selection tool down. So I'm gonna go to this quick selection and then what I'm gonna do is I'll zoom in on here so I have my mask already made which is great from what I already did I'm gonna use my quick select wand and I'm just gonna paint in here see how it's gonna figure out it uses basically the same calculation thing that the, the magnetic lasso is doing it's looking at this it's figuring out like okay I think all of those are the colors that are close enough so then grab my brush I have black on my brush for hiding things on a mask. This is where you wanna make sure you're selected on the mask because you can only paint black and white on a mask. If you're seeing color over here, that means you are not selected on the mask. So make sure you're clicking on the mask in the layers panel before you edit it. Then I'm just gonna take black and paint in here. Now what's great is that I can't paint outside the selection. so. I just painted in this whole area. And yeah, I do have to fix the outline again, but that's, again, we're, I'm gonna come to that in a second. So, great, quick select wand. There is also what I call the racist uncle tool, but the magic wand. This is the, the uncle of the quick select wand, but it has this setting called tolerance. So the magic wand, likes it when everything is the same color. If you're catching my drift on why this is the racist uncle tool. So it just wants all the colors to be the same. So if it's a very intolerant uncle, say tolerance is one, you'll see that when I click, it's not very helpful. It's trying real hard to figure out which one of these look the same. If I make this a little bit more tolerant, go up to say 60, you'll find that it figures it out. It's like, hey, all of these, they're about the same. They're close enough. We're all in this together, right? So same thing up here. I could also increase my tolerance, say to like 90 if I'm, if there's like, if there's heavy shading, you might need a higher tolerance. And I just want it, the magic wand tool is not really useful. You won't use it that much, but I just like making fun of it because I call it the racist uncle tool. It was, it was a good laugh last year in animation. Um. So anyway, that is um, the tools that we're covering today. Just want to touch real quickly on some last minute reminders about all the stuff that we talked about. So when you are making masks, if you just press the mask button, it's going to give you an empty mask and you're doing it all by hand. That's fine. When you're making a mask with a selection, you just make the selection first, click the mask button, and then if you need to, go back and fix it, which I'm about to talk about. How do you toggle between editing the layer and editing the layer mask? Like I was just saying, you need to make sure you're clicked on the mask. You'll see like a little frame that comes up around it. Your colors will only be in black and white. That'll be a big hint. And then as a reminder, if you're editing your mask, so say you're about to go fix it, which I'm about to, you need to remember painting white will make it visible. Painting black will hide things. So going back to this, the assignment is going to be to take these two pictures. So we got Dirty Dan and Pinhead Larry. And you just need to remove the characters from the background. So you only want the characters visible. All the characters are the only thing left visible at the end. No background. And then I will say that if you want you need to, you will be, no matter what, submitting two completed masks. 
you are submitting two masks to me. You may, if you if you wish, only do one of the ones I have assigned and one other thing. As long as you run it by me of, like, if you f have a character from, like, Gumball or Chowder that you want to mask or whatever, like, that's fine. Go do that. Just let me, just ask me first if you wouldn't mind. Um, but, yeah, you'll be submitting two completed masks for this assignment. Two. Dose. And then you'll have another one coming with the Monday assignment, just as an aside. So I'll be making three total masks, but two for this assignment. Two assignment, two masks, this assignment. So going back to Pinhead Lair, or Dirty Dan here, you'll notice that I have to go back. I put this red under here just to make it easier for you guys to see. You don't need to do this, but... So I'm on my mask. I have the little frames around it. I have black. I want to be painting white, and so I'm going to make my brush a little smaller, and I'm going to paint my white, and I'm just on the regular good old-fashioned brush tool, so, you know, settings for hardness and size are up here too, and I'm just going to paint this in, and here. And so I do want you to try and bring back the outline if you screwed it up. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to look like you actually tried. So like there, there's a little bit of blue that came back, but I'm not going to lose any sleep over it, you know? We're just getting things, getting things underway. We just want to show that we're understanding the concept. It doesn't need to be flawless, okay? But you need to try, so... Like there, I left a little blue back in. These things happen. Great. Come back over here. Don't be sloppy though. So like, here, I'm gonna do this real quick and then I'll just zoom in over here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it shouldn't be sloppy neither. So I'll just get this. Okay. Et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, you'll be submitting your two completed masks. Use both my images or one and then do another. Um, but that's it for the assignment. Thanks for watching, folks.